One way of showing someone you think they are extra special is by setting the table for them. And you can take this to a whole other level by using things handmade by you. And so I want to show you how to make this garter stitch placemat to do just that. Let's start with a short supply list. You're going to need a large gauge knitting loom at any shape with at least 40 pegs, 276 yards of worsted weight yarn, and an optional three stitch markers. For more details, visit lumahead.com forward slash placemat. All right, I'm going to be using the ring type of stitch marker, but you can use bands if that's more comfortable for you. And let me show you real quick how I'm going to place them on my loom. I'm knitting from left to right and so counting up this is my peg number five and then from the other end I'm not using this peg 41 from my 41 peg loom so counting down in the opposite direction I need five pegs so I'm going to place this stitch marker on peg 36 and then I want to uh, find the midpoint on my loom. So here is my third stitch marker and it's gonna be on peg 20. Remember that you don't have to do this at all. All right, let's get to the cast on. Using any shape loom with at least 40 pegs, let's get ready to cast on. So we're using two strands of worsted weight yarn and I'm gonna secure mine to the anchor peg using a simple knot. You can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable. And I'm going to be knitting from left to right. You can knit from right to left. Doesn't matter with this pattern, It's either one is okay. You're going to go from the back of the peg to the front and wrap your 40 pegs. All right, now you're gonna take the working yarn and we're going to turn to the opposite direction because we're knitting flat and put the working yarn over the existing loop on peg 40 and from the bottom up, knit off. It's gonna be a little funky, so go ahead and tighten that stitch by pulling the working yarn from the back and then bring it right back to the front of peg 40 over the existing loop and take the bottom loop over the top and knit off and now tighten that stitch. And I'm using the flat version of the knit stitch. So for that, I basically put the working yarn over the existing loop and knit off with the bottom loop. So you can use the flat or the U where you half wrap the peg and knit off. Either one of these versions will work just fine for this cast on row. Once you knit off peg one, you're done with the cast on and you're ready for row one. Okay, on this row, we're going to slip one and then knit 39. How do you do that? Well, first of all, before we start heading in that opposite direction, we're gonna take this loop right here from the previous uh, row and pull on it just a bit to tighten up those two stitches. And then the first one, you see I didn't knit because I slipped it. In other words, I skipped it. And then I start knitting on peg two. Now I'm using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So I'm going to half wrap and then knit off that stitch. You can use the flat version, which is the one I was using on the way here, right? When I did the cast on, either one of these versions of the knit stitch is fine. Just don't use the E-wrap version. So remember, you slipped one, and now you're going to knit 39 pegs. And then when you're done, we're ready for row two, where again, you're going to slip one, then purl 38, and knit one. All right, so we're heading in the opposite direction. And before we start knitting, I wanna pull on that stitch from the previous row to tighten up those two loops because I'm gonna be skipping, slipping that first peg and going to the one that follows. So see when I pull how the other one tightens, 
That's what we want. Now take the working yarn and put it under the existing loop on peg 39, scoop up and create a new loop. You're gonna take the old one off, put the new one on, and you're gonna pull the working yarn to tighten that loop. All right, let me show you that one more time. You put the working yarn under the existing loop from the top, scoop up, and you create a new loop. You take the old one off, you put the new one on, and you pull. And that is your purl stitch. All right, remember that after skipping that first peg, which was peg 40, you're now going to work 38 purls. And as you knit your 38 purls, I want to take this time to say thank you to Lorena Reese for her continued support of this channel. Thank you so very much. You should still be knitting those purl stitches because you're going to continue with them until you reach peg two. That's your last purl stitch because peg one, you're going to do a knit stitch. In order to keep your fabric looking nice and neat, that last stitch is a knit stitch. And now you're ready to turn around and you're going to knit rows three through 90. And for this, you're going to repeat rows one and two. Are you ready for this? 44 more times. What does that look like? It means you're going to first knit row one and then knit row two and do that combination of those two rows 44 times for a total of 90 rows, not including the cast on. A quick cheat for me is that when I'm knitting towards the right, I'm using the knit stitch. And when I'm knitting towards the left, I'm using the purl stitch. Here I end the purl and knit this last stitch. And then remember that you always slip the first peg when you're starting a row. And before you knit that second peg, you're going to tighten the stitch from the previous row in order to get a nice clean um, looking fabric. See, I'm going to tighten that and then I'm going towards the right. So I'm using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. I slipped my first peg and I tightened the stitch from the previous row. That's what I'm going to keep doing. Once I'm finished with this row of knit stitches, I'm going to turn to the opposite direction and start my purl row. For those of you wondering if this ring stitch marker is going to fall off my loom, um, let me show you that it does not. Here we go. It is there until I finish my project. If you guys are interested, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can get them from my store. Very important before I forget. The knot that's on your anchor peg, remove it after a few rows. Next, we're gonna work that dent where your utensils go. You can make this thinner, thicker, or eliminate it altogether, all right? So we're gonna start with row 91 because you should have been done with the rest of them. And now we're gonna slip one, knit 39. So super easy, remember you slip the first stitch and before you start knitting, you're gonna uh, pull on that stitch from the previous row and then just start knitting. I'm using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch here and it's nothing but knitting the row. So ignore all the noise my kittens are doing in the background, just continue knitting. Remember you need to reach peg 40 in order to finish this row. And once you knit off peg 40, you are done with row 91 and you're ready for row 92 where you're going to slip one, purl four, knit 30, purl four, and knit one. As always, you're starting that row by skipping that peg right there, which was peg 40. And we're gonna start with that purl number one right here. You guys know how to do that purl stitch, but just in case from the top with your hook, you're gonna scoop up your working yarn and create a new loop. Take the old loop off the peg, put the new loop on and pull. That was purl number two. And now you're doing purl three right here. 
and the last pearl for right now is pearl four and as you can see I did put the stitch marker on that pearl to remind me that on this row number two, 92 I'm doing only four pearls and then I'm going to start the knit stitches. Now personally when I am knitting from right to left and I need to do a knit stitch I tend to prefer the flat stitch not for any other reason other than it's comfortable to me but you can use the u-wrap knit stitch if that's more comfortable so remember that you need 30 knit stitches before you get to the next set of four pearls once you're done with those 30 knit stitches we're ready for those four pearl so here's my first one and don't worry that the stitch markers have different charms um this was my second um project and i changed the stitch markers so remember you have your four pearls and i marked where my four pearls started so i didn't really have to count and then i'm going to end right here with a knit stitch because remember on your pearl row you end with a stitch for your fabric to look better and now you're ready for rows 93 through 100 where you will repeat rows 91 and then row 92 four more times so what does this look like you're gonna knit row 91 remember slip one knit 39 and follow that with row 92 where you're gonna slip one Purl four, knit 30, purl four, knit one. And you're gonna do 91, 92, 91, 92, 91, 92. So you're gonna do that, those two rows four more times for a total of 100 rows, not including the cast on. All right, so remember you slip one and then you're going to knit 39 pegs using your preferred version of the knit stitch. Turn directions, slip one peg, and then you're gonna do four purl stitches. Got it? Knit those four purl stitches. Thirty knit stitches after those four pearls. After the thirty knit stitches, four more pearls. the row with a knit stitch once you're done with all of your repeats then you're ready for row 100 and one where basically you're gonna slip one and then knit 39 and if you remember this is exactly row one right so you're gonna tighten that stitch from the row previous row slip one and then knit those 39 stitches using either the U, the flat, or the true knit stitch. If you use the E-wrap, you're gonna get a very different look and a very different size, right? Because it's a different type of an E-wrap. All right, and once you're done with that row, then row 102 is a slip one, purl 38, knit one, which sounds very familiar because it is exactly like row two. So you're gonna turn around, Tighten that, that stitch from the previous row, slip one, and then go straight into your purl stitches 
of which you're going to do 38 and then end the row with one knit stitch. Again, it's a familiar story. You've heard it before. <laughs> All right, keep knitting. Once you're finished with row 102, then you're ready for rows 103 through 114, where all you're gonna do is repeat those previous two rows six more times. Okay, you know how to do this, but still, let me show you. What does that look like? You're gonna first knit row 101, which is slip one, knit 39, and then knit row 102, which is slip one, purl 38, knit one, and you're gonna do that combination six more times, and that's gonna give you a new total, which will be 114 minus the cast on. And then you're going to end with row 115, where all you're gonna do is knit the row, and you already know how to do that, right? You're going to slip one after you tighten, and then knit 39 pegs and you're ready for the cast off. Yay! And we're going to be doing the modified basic bind off. So it's kind of like a little hack. All right, let's do it. So this technique is worked over two pegs. There's always a peg one and peg two. And right here, we're gonna start off with these two. And the way we're gonna start is you're going to knit off pegs one and two. Now I'm gonna do a figure eight. You don't have to. You can just do two knit stitches, one on peg one and one on peg two. Here I did a figure eight. I'm complicating things and I don't know. I just, that's what I wanted to do so that's what I did. Then I'm gonna take my hook and I'm going to knit off these two pegs. And like I said, you can just do two regular knit stitches and be done. And then you're going to tighten your stitch. Throughout this process, you want to always keep your stitches nice and tight. So both peg one and two were knit off. And now I take the loop off of peg two. I bring it over to peg one. I tighten my stitch and I'm going to knit off peg one. I'm taking that loop from the bottom over the top and knit off. And then I'm gonna take the loop off of peg one and I'm gonna move it over to peg two. And now peg two becomes peg one and I tighten my stitch. I have two new peg one and two and I have an empty peg. See, peg one, my original peg one is now empty. The difference is here that as I continue now, I'm only going to knit off peg two. See, only one peg. And then I take the loop off of peg two and I'm gonna move it over to peg one, tighten my stitch, knit off peg one, and the loop that is left there, I'm going to take it off of peg one and bring it to the empty peg and I'm going to tighten my stitch right here. All right, now I have a nice corner right there and I'm going to knit off my new peg two and take the loop off of peg two, leave it empty and bring it over to peg one and I'm gonna tighten my stitch because I wanna keep things nice and tight throughout the process. I'm going to knit off my now peg one, take it off and move it over to the empty peg which is peg two, I will tighten it and it becomes my new peg one. And now you see that I've already done the bind off on those three pegs right there. And I'm gonna continue to do this process moving from um, you know the first pegs all the way. I'm gonna continue to do this, right? This is the, the first three that I've bound off and I have a nice uh, uh, pointy cor corner because I did the two stitches instead of just one. I don't want my uh, corners to be rounded. I want them nice and pointy because I'm doing a square project. So continue to do this until you get to the midpoint. We, we mark the midpoint for a reason, but for now you're gonna continue the process of knitting off only one peg and then bringing the loop from peg two over to peg one. And that's how you're gonna continue to cast off again until you get to the midpoint, which is peg 20. So here at mi the middle point of the project is where I modify the basic bind off in that as you can see, I'm going to knit off both pegs one and two here at the midpoint. This is peg 20 right here. I'm going to knit off and this is 
JPEG 19 in the project as a whole, right? You don't have to do the figure eight like I did, by the way. You can just knit off both uh, peg 19 and peg 20. Um, and then just as usual, you're going to take the loop off peg 20, move it to 19, knit off 19 and move it, move the loop off that peg over to 20. Again, this is the midpoint of the project as a whole, where we're going to modify the basic bind off by knitting off both pegs one and two this is just to loosen things up so that your your uh, bind off is not so tight and both the cast on and cast off look about the same size if you don't do that the cast off this row right here will tend to look tighter and more narrow than the cast on that's why i modify it by knitting off pegs both pegs one and two at the midpoint and then after that i just continue with the basic bind off right this is peg 20 of 40 pegs which means you've already cast off halfway through your project so just keep going you need to get to the last two all right here are the last two pegs and we're going to knit those two now i'm going to do the figure eight you don't have to do this figure eight i just find that um it looks better to me but all you need to do is knit these last two pegs and once you knit off your two pegs go ahead and make sure that you tighten things up to make them look neater and then we're going to go ahead and take uh the loop off of peg two and bring it over to peg one and then um tighten that knit off and um personally in order to secure this uh, I'm just going to get a crochet hook after I cut the working yarn. Now, you could cut the working yarn and pull it through and then make a knot. So there's more than one way. But in my case, right here, this last loop, um, which you don't have to uh, take off the, <laughs> the loom until you um, until you uh, are ready to cut the, the working yarn. But um, I'm going to cut my yarn right here. And then with that crochet hook, I'm just going to feed it through and then tighten to create a knot. All right. Now that's going to leave you like a funky little pointy odd on, uh, I don't know what to call it, an odd shape at the end. Not to worry because when we weave in the end up here, uh, we're going to make this look right. Okay. That uh, leftover working yarn right there, it's going to come on over and it's going to uh, make it look neat. Now, another thing I wanted to remind you is that you need to stretch your stitches, especially right here where the dent is. Um, if you don't stretch out those stitches, it's just not going to look right and it's not going to be the right size. So stretching this, your stitches is very important. And another thing that I did, I tighten my cast on. So you need to do that. And I'll give you a video on how to tighten the cast on because that's optional. You don't have to, but it's a really good idea. All right, let's get ready um, to weave in the ends. And um, you can do that with a crochet hook or with a needle, whatever uh, you feel more comfortable with comfortable with i also have a weaving tool that i use uh, it's from the hook nook brand and i have a video on how to use that that's actually now my favorite way of weaving in the my ends but find whatever works best for you now after i feel like i've gone up in one direction weaving my ends i turn around and go in the opposite direction and I feel like that's more secure. And then since I'm using two strands and I can, I separate them and I'm going to tie a knot. So once um, you're done with that side, you're ready then uh, to weave in the other end. Uh, when you tighten the cast on, you're going to end up with a long string right here. So that one, um, you need to weave in as well. And like I said, to tighten that cast on, I'll give you a video to show you how to do that. 
Another thing that I did that I thought added a lot to the project was attaching one of these little handmade tags to it. And for that, you need a needle that fits that one. And I use the same yarn that I used uh, for the project. So a key point to attaching this tag is that I didn't want the string showing up on the back right here. So in order to avoid that, I knit, you see through the yarn that's in the front and then to the next side of the little um, hole. But you see how you can't see the yarn when I turn the project um, on the reverse side. It's because I'm knitting through these loops right here on the front of the project. And then I just make sure that I, I feed it right back through to where I left uh, part of the yarn, the tail. And then I make a knot and it kind of hides away and my tag is attached. Okay, my dear Lumas, that is it. That is the garter stitch placemat. Make lots and lots of these for your family and friends to take home and remember and cherish you. So until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.